Hello and welcome to another one of my videos and in today's video I'm going to be going through some stuff I want at auction. Now I was very selective in what I was trying to buy. I only ever buy stuff I feel that has been mispriced in auctions. I'm very strict on how I bid so I have a criteria in my head. I, I work out what I think it will sell for and then I will bid accordingly. So it, it wasn't a big order. I, I didn't really have the cash flow, but yeah, let's get into it. So there was a lot of five of these. So the Queen's 95th birthday privy. Now I reckon these are probably worth one, two, five a pop. And they, they kind of fit, they're, they're quarter sovereigns by the way. They, they kind of fit my strategy of small coins being moved up the value curve. I think they, I think they were very underpriced. There was a few lots, and one of the reasons I targeted this lot was because, or these lots was because there was actually fifteen of these on offer. And my mindset was, you've you've either got to have a big collector come in, or you've got to have a dealer come in. So I just, in my head, figured that they would be underpriced because there were so many for sale. Sometimes that's the case. If you put a lot of things in an auction room, or from my experience anyway, um, and I'm not the most experienced buyer from auctions, so please don't, please, please do your own research. It may be a regional thing as well. But if you put a lot of things in an auction, I've, I've found that it doesn't tend to go for the price that it should. Now, I did like these because they had the privy marks. I'm not a huge fan of privy marks on sovereigns. However, for the price I paid, it someone would pay an extra fiver, maybe an extra tenner on it. So that was my rationale for these. This one, for the life of me, I don't understand how they, like, come on guys, really? You had one job. Literally one job. How can you put that? And I don't understand why they put the queen on this side either. Surely it should be this side, but that's just a point of contention really. Maybe I'm just nitpicking. So yeah, there's five of them. Move that there. Oh, there's hair everywhere. Don't be a hairy person. It's it's not great. I bought this. So this is a tenth ounce maple. But it's from the World Trade Center that was it was recovered from the wreckage. So I in my head I was thinking the provenance has got to make it a two hundred pound plus coin, surely. I could be wrong. Uh, there could be people saying, well, actually, I'm not paying for the fact that it's been in the World Trade Center, which is fair enough. But I think I think it would go for 200. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, it's always a learning curve in this game. Sometimes you kind of take a, a risk. I took a risk on this one. I do think that provenance is worth more it is a privy coin it doesn't really matter that it's a privy coin it, it's all about this so yeah I, I end up getting that i i can't remember what i paid i i think i was happy with the price i paid no i was happy with the price i paid but i, I can't remember exactly how much i paid i need to have a look at the, the paperwork I end up buying this again this is probably a 200 pound coin so this is a 1987 omp panda Panda's been out of fashion. I, I said it in the last video. I don't know why. This is a good coin. I'm more than happy to get this. Now, the gentleman I did a really big trade with last month, month before. It turns out he was also bidding on this, so we actually ended up having a little bidding war on it, and he he kind of clocked out. I I think he he could have bid more as a collector, like. I think 200 pounds is where this coin is at. I, I certainly think he could have bidded more. I wasn't prepared to bid anymore. I, I put my final bid in and it came in, but I wasn't gonna bid anymore over that. Nice coin, it is a nice coin. I believe this is the dreaded copper spots. This happens a lot on pandas, it, it really does. I've had a lot of pandas with copper spots.
I don't know why they're they're prolific on on pandas. I got this coin in, so this one's already been offered out. I have a waiting list for people who want this type of coinage. Five dollar Indian head. These go anywhere between, you know, five thirty and six hundred, depending on what it is. I'm going to offer this at five fifty. I remember when I used to buy this type of coinage and it used to be like the 350 mark. I don't even think that's a price thing. I think it's just a people have opened their eyes to the potential of these coins. You you can't really go with you can't really go wrong with pre 33. The premium is there for a reason. It it's one of it's one of those coins where they made beautiful coins. Even the coronet head. I really like the coronet head as well. So there's that one. This was my wild card buy. Now I'm going to offer this to a lady I deal with. I think she liked this. So there was no love for the Liberian coins. However, they they went a lot cheaper than they should have done. And this is why I don't auction stuff with auction houses, because you get you get whacked twice, really. If you sell something and it doesn't go for the price it should, you also get whacked for the fees as well, which, you know, I, I don't want to be held at ransom to that. But I bought this because of the design. The other Liberian coins didn't look too good, you know, in terms of design. I quite like this coat of arms, you know, it's it's kind of nice. But it was all about the elephant. I thought the elephant was really, really nice coin. If you had this coin and you had, say, the United States or Great Britain on it, I'll tell you the premium would be so much higher. It really would. Um, where a coin is minted, it, it plays a factor in the pricing of the coin because there's confidence in it. And there's also a collectability in it. People will collect the UK or Canadian, you know, all the major mints. Do people collect Liberia coins? No, not really. But the design should see this through. I don't know what the price is at. Um, I might just price it at £45 a gram. I think this is stunning. I, I think this is a really well-designed coin. I think it really picks up the elephant. really nice coin and again it's a shame it's it's from it's from Liberia because it would be commanding a higher price had it been from a, a more respected mint and that's just the way it is you know Liberia's or many of the African countries they're never going to have the pulling power South Africa does okay but apart from that a lot of those countries they make some beautiful beautiful coinage but there's no premium on it, or you can pick it up with no premium on it. And that's a crying shame. It, it really is, but I don't make the rules. You know, I just trade the spread. So yeah, tell me what you think. What, what do you like? What do you think is the best buy out of these? Do you agree with my rationale for buying? You know, I, I, do, I do like to hear people's opinions. Like sometimes people tell me stuff and I think, no, you're wrong. But I try and take in feedback where I can because well it's free isn't it <laughs> you know there's some really talented respected people out there who genuinely know what's going down they know their stuff you know why wouldn't I listen to their opinions for me in terms of where I think it's at you know this one I've done well on but I I really like this one I I really do like this one this one's a wild card this they will do okay you know I'll, I'll just ping them out the panda again, you know, probably paid slightly higher, but you know, I'm I'm happy with what I paid overall.
So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.